right, it's Thursday, and it's time again to do our wonderful Bible study. And as I said last week, we're doing a series about God shows he is concerned for those discarded. And the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. Make sure to uh, tell your friends and family and to uh, tag them with this uh, Bible study and also to like and share as much as possible. Take notes. So today we're going to talk about Hagar, which is another woman in the Bible that was discarded. And she had such a powerful impact on the genealogy as well. Um, and of what happened in the world. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to give you some thoughts and then we're going to go into the scripture. So Hagar was an Egyptian girl who was a slave to Abra Abram, which is Sarah's wife. And we find most of the information about Hagar is in Genesis chapter 16. So after God had appeared to Abram and promised him a homeland and a heritage, as we see in Genesis 12, 1 to 4, 10 years went by and he and Sarah still had no baby in Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. We see that. In her impatience, she took the matters in her own hands and gave her maid, Hagar, to her husband saying, go sleep with my, my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. And that's in verse 2 and 3. So Abram did as she said, and Hagar became pregnant. Now, you wouldn't find that in today's society, we wouldn't be telling our husbands to go have, well, let me say this. Normal, rational people wouldn't do that. But you do have some people out there who are really uh, on the fringe with their thought processes. But anyway, so Abraham's sin with Hagar had resulted in centuries of sorrow and bloodshed as the descendants of Isaac which is a Jewish family, and Ishmael, which are the Arabs, have been mortal enemies since biblical days. Mohammed, the father of Islam, is said to have been from the line of Ishmael, which is one reason Muslims claim a right to the promised land, Israel, right? Hagar is a revered woman in Islam since Ishmael is the father of the Arabic people. Now, <laughs> the um, the Quran or the Quranic version of the Genesis account twists the story to make Hagar the heroine of the story and her son Ishmael the child of promise instead of Isaac. So with that being said, let's get into the story. We all should know it. However, they... The, the repercussion of sin lingers on today because Hagar was so misunderstood. She, um, you know, was, was used and the whole situation kind of backfired. So Genesis chapter 21, verse 8 to 21 says, and again, this is the new, this is the new international version. It says, the child grew and was weaned and on the day... Isaac was weaned, Aram held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Agar the Egyptian had born to Abram was mocking. And she said to Abram, get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because she is, because he is your offspring. So because of the promise and because he is his offspring, he will still inherit, right? Um, and I'm speaking about Ishmael, right? So he goes on to verse 14. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. 
When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow's shot away. For she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. Verse 17. This is where it ties in with our series that we're working on this month. Okay. It says, God heard the boy crying and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and as he grew up, he lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. So, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. People in the family might make you an outcast, might talk about you, might say all kinds of evil things against you. But what God says is the only thing that matters. And God has said to them that he's going to make a great nation out of Ishmael, regardless of what transpired and all the things that was happening in Abraham and Sarah's life. God hears those that's discarded. Amen. He heard what happened with Hagar and, and, and Ishmael. And he rectified the situation. Amen. And he fixed it for them. And so right now, even though they stepped out of line, we're still suffering the repercussions of that because the Arabic tribe, that's why we have all the stuff that's going right now in Palestine, is as a result of the descendants of Ishmael. So, you, you know, when you decide to do something, when God give you a goal and tell you, I got you, just wait. <laughs> if Just wait. Just, just relax and wait because that's what Abraham and Sarah needed to have done. Amen. Just wait for God to do what he promised because he is not a man that he would lie. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, I will give you back your health and I will heal your wounds, says the Lord, for you are called an outcast. Jerusalem for whom no one cares. There are times when you just feel like nobody cares about you but God. And guess what? He's the one that you you should be God clear, clear cares about you. Amen. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26 and 30 says, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And the, then he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. Oh, come on, somebody. God chose things despised by the world. Come on, somebody. Things counted as nothing at all and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus for our benefit. God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy. And he freed us from sin. Children of God, we need to make sure we recognize what's important. We tend to look at things that's not important and dwell on things that's negatively affecting us. And we tend to forget what's important. Romans 12, 50 to 70 says, be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 to 35 says, Then Peter replied, I see very clear that God shows no favoritism in every nation. He accepts those who fear him and do what is right. God shows no favoritism. Amen? 
Micah 7, 18 says, Where is another God like you who pardons the guilt of the remnant, overlooking the sins of his special people? You will not stay angry with your people forever because you delight in showing unfailing love. That's what we get from God, unfailing love. Psalm 41, 1 to 3 says, Oh, the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alone, alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. So, points of interest, just to do a recap. God takes care of us. God wants us to grow up in him. He wants us to know that he hears our cries and that he is never too far away. God loves those that's rejected. And God says, don't be distressed. I got you. Just like he so told Hagar and her son Ishmael. God fulfills his promises we all need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. And with that, we're going to conclude today's study of those that's been discarded. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you. We love you, Lord God. Thank you for these examples that let us know that you are in the blessing business and you are not concerned about what man is concerned about. You will bless those you love and take care of those that man discard. We honor you, Father God, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' holy and mattress name we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, children of God. Have a wonderful rest of your week and see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.